In this problem, we're told a tension force of 175 newtons inclined at 20 degrees above the horizontal is used to pull a 40 kilogram packing crate a distance of 6 meters on a rough surface. If the crate moves at a constant speed, find A, the work done by the tension force, and B, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the surface. So I went ahead and drew what was going on here, right? So we have this crate, 40 kilograms, and then there's this tension force, right? It's basically pulling it or whatever. And it's 175 newtons, it's, and it's 20 degrees above the horizontal, right? So it's gonna be pulled six meter, or, yeah, six meters to this right here, right? So this right here is our drawing. So let's just go ahead and start. So for A, what are we trying to solve for? For A, we're trying to find the work done by the tension force, right? So we're solving for work, and the formula for work is force times distance times the cosine of theta. So this right here is how you solve for it, right? And so we're trying to find the work done by the tension force. So the force, right, of this problem right? It's just going to be 175 uh, newtons, right? That's going to be the force done by this, right? So that's what we're going to have to do, right? So work is going to be equal to the force, right? And so the force in this case is just going to be 175, right? That's going to be the force newtons times the distance. How far is it going to travel? So it's going to travel six meters, right? So we know it's going to be traveling six meters. So that's the D and then the cosine of theta. So what is the cosine of theta? So we need to find theta, right? And so theta in this case, or in, in, for this formula, is basically the angle between where the force is being applied and the direction it's going, right? So if I draw a, like a free body diagram of the thing, right? So imagine this is the x-axis, right? So this is this line right here. And then straight up would just be like straight up right here, right? So what's the direction it's going in? It's going directly to the right, right? So it's going straight along this line, which is this line right here. So if we draw that, the direction it's going in is that way. Where is the force being applied though? So the force is being applied at an angle of 20 degrees above, right? So it's going up like this. And so theta is the angle between the force and the direction it's going, right? And so what is the angle between these two, right? It's just gonna be 20 degrees, right? Because we know the force is being applied 20 degrees above the horizontal. So theta in this case is just gonna be 20 degrees, right? So 175 newtons or times six times uh, the cosine of 20. So you wanna just go ahead and plug this in. So if you go ahead and do this, you're going to get that it equals 900, right? So work is equal to 986.7, uh, or 986.677. So you can round however you want. Work is measured in joules, right? So you can just put this in scientific notation. So 9.87, right? I'm just rounding this to a 7, and then 1, 2, so times 10 to the 2 joules. Right, so just choose whatever you want. Make sure you just do what your teacher wants. But essentially, this is going to be your answer to A. Right, so the work done by the tension force. So that's A. Let's move on to B now. So B, we're trying to find uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the surface. So we're solving for the coefficient of kinetic friction, or mu sub k. Right, so this is just a Greek letter. It's basically the coefficient of kinetic, fr uh, kinetic friction. So how do we solve for this? So there's a formula that relates a bunch of variables, which you need to know, which is the force of friction is equal to mu sub k multiplied by f sub n. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve, and I'll explain why in a second. But essentially, right, if we want to solve for mu sub k in this formula, we need to divide both sides by f sub n, right? We just want it by itself. So what we're going to do is take uh, the force of friction on this problem and then divide it by uh, the normal force, right? So this is how we're going to solve. So let's just approach both of these. So let's start with the frictional force. So what is the frictional force going to be equal to? So essentially, the way you solve these problems are by finding the sum of the forces in each direction. So for the x direction, right? Because the force of friction is going to be in the x direction. But we know it's going to be equal to zero, and why is that? So the sum of the forces in the x direction, they're equal to zero, and that's because it's moving at a constant speed. So it's equal to zero. But what are the forces in the x direction? So you want to set basically zero equal to the forces in the x direction. So what are they? So this is the x direction, right? So what are the forces acting in it? We have this tension force, right? But we want the force in the x direction. We don't want it, uh, right? We don't want the vector or whatever. So what we want to do is just find this. And how do we find that? So you should know how to do this by now, but essentially it's just 175 times the cosine of the angle, right? That's how you find the x component of a vector, right? So that's going to be this force right here, right? And you can think about it too. If we want to find this side, which is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse, right? Uh, so Katoa. So we can take the cosine of the angle, and it's equal to the adjacent side, A, over the hypotenuse, which is 175, right? So 175 times the cosine of 20, right? That's just going to be the adjacent side, which is what we wanted. So that's how we get 175 times the cosine of 20. Now, what what else, right? What other force is acting on there, right? There's going to be the force of friction, right? There's some force going in the negative direction that's going to be slowing it down, right? And since it's going in the uh, opposite direction, right? Because we say the direction it's traveling is positive, direction against it is negative. So it's 175 times the cosine of 20. And then 
uh, right? Because we're putting all the forces in this equation. So we got to minus the force of friction. And then these are just going to be the two forces in the x direction, right? So 175 times the cosine of 20, what does this mean? So if we add the force of friction to the other side, right? Force of friction, you're going to get the force of friction is just equal to 175 times the cosine of 20, right? And we know that. And you can think about it logically, right? This force has to be equal, right? The force in this direction has to be equal to this one because it's moving at a constant speed. So now we have the force of friction, right? And we need F sub n. So how do we find S sub n? So the way we do this is instead of doing the x direction, we're just going to do the y direction. So we're going to take the sum of the forces in the y, which is, again, going to be equal to 0. So 0 is going to be equal to, and then what are the forces in the y? So we actually have three different forces here, right? We have the normal force, right, which just goes up like this, right? And then we also have the force due to gravity, which is mg, right? So we have mg, and so we have mg, right? And then we also have, so let me just write it down. So f of n, since it's going upwards, right? We label it positive. Mg is going down, so we label it negative, right? So when you do this, all you're doing is just writing the forces in the y direction. And so what else do we have? So we also have the force, right, as the tension force. So the force going upwards like this, right? So what is it in the y direction? So we want the y component now. Instead of the x component, like we did in the last, last part, we want the y component. So this is just going to be 175 times the sine of the angle, right? And the angle is 20. Right? And I showed you how to do it with cosine, so I'm not going to show you how to do it this time for sine, but it's basically the same thing. You just use trick. So we're solving for F sub n, right? So F sub n is going to be equal to, and then if we add this to the other side and then subtract this, it's just going to be, right? It's just going to be mg, because mg will become positive, minus 175, right, times the sine of 20. So now we have F sub n, right? We have F sub n, and we have uh, the force of friction. So mu sub k is just going to be equal to them over each other. So mu sub k is the force of friction, which uh, we just calculated right here, 175 times the cosine of 20. And then you're going to divide that by mg minus 175 times the sine of 20. Well, what's the mass of it, right? That's m, which is just 40. Multiplied by g, which is 9.8, right? And then minus 175 times the sine of 20. So what I want you to do is just go ahead and plug this in. All right, so 100, 175 times the cosine of 20, right? So go ahead and plug that in and then divide it by 40 times 9.8 minus 175 times uh, the sine of 20. So when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get mu sub k is equal to 0.495. So this is what you get when you plug it in the calculator. Uh, but yeah, so this is mu sub k or your answer to b, right? So the coefficient of kinetic friction, this is b, and then this was your answer to a. But yeah, these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.